It was, it's, it's quite a heroic wow. figure, I, I feel. Wow. And you, you know, in addition to some additional figures, you also bring it up to the modern day in terms of some other, uh, probably you, you also bring in certain right. historic figures. Tell us about that in terms of linking these historic figures um, such as Dr. King and Malcolm X and the Black Power Movement to this. Yeah, no, it's good that you asked about that because what happens with the civil rights movement is it triggers, well, we know it triggered many responses from mm -hmm. all kinds of rights movement, women's movement, and so on, uh, was really goaded into action by what African Americans were able to do and how they mobilized and so on. So they're attracted to Dr. King's movement, Native Americans. The uh, American Indians are organized. They start their own campaigns. But there's a difference. They admire Dr. King, but they really like Malcolm X and Stokely Carmichael, because they're not seeking integration into American society. They're saying, we don't need to integrate into this nightmare, just as the black power uh, individuals are. And so they join, and they try to learn from Malcolm X, and they copy tactic, tac tactics that they do. They occupy Alcatraz Island. Uh, they occupy Wounded Knee, where there was a massacre back in 1890. And uh, this carries up to the present day, I found, that Mumia Abu-Jamal and Leonard Peltier, the Native American leader, both in jail, have come out advocating for each other as political prisoners. I was even on a radio program years ago in, in which they were both speaking, and it was a very moving experience. Uh, <clears throat> there's also uh, Reverend Farrakhan's Million Man March, in which they made sure they gave the podium to Native American leaders. So there's been this reaching out that's, that's taken place. And what Black Indians does is it traces this way back. Let me, uh, to, uh, let's say a woman like Lucy Gonzalez Parsons. Mm -hmm. She's of Native American, Hispanic, <clears throat> and uh, African American descent. And she's born a slave in Texas. And she becomes the most militant voice for socialism and social change in the United States. She speaks at trade union meetings. She leads picket lines. She goes to invited to Europe by trade unions in England and, and speaks there. She goes before a radical union called the Industrial Workers of the World. And she says, you know, the next time we go out on strike, fellow workers, Let's not go out on strike. Let's stay in on strike mm. and tie up the means of production. Mm. Well, that's an idea we can all recognize as Mahatma Gandhi, mm. as nonviolent resistance. Dr. King picked up on it. And here's this little lady in 1905, by the way, not too well educated, all self educated, brilliant speaker, though, very charismatic. And she's proposing this idea. Mm. And she follows it through. She leaves. She lives in Chicago, and she leads poor people of all colors uh, into wealthy neighborhoods, and they go to knock on the doors of wealthy people, and they say, here we are. Mm -hmm. We're part of your society, too. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? In terms of, you know, why, you know, the why, if, for those who why should people have a copy of this book in their library? What is the most important why? Well, first of all, I think it's a lot of history that people don't know in their, in their class, never learned mm -hmm. in their classrooms. I mean, I, when I, I go, go out and give a lot of PowerPoint lectures at universities and museums and so on, and more than a few times, once a John Jay, uh, a, a young black woman came up to me with tears in her eyes, and she said, why didn't I learn any of this? She was blaming herself mm -hmm. for what was a whiteout mm -hmm. con uh, conducted by mm -hmm. historians, mm -hmm. just casually conducted, leave them out, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the people I use in there is James P. Beckworth. This man is a legend of the West and aligned with Kit Carson and Buffalo Bill and Wild Bill Hickok. And he discovers a pass through the Sierra Nevada mountains into California that leads to the gold rush. Mm -hmm. And he's left out. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. He uh, appears finally in a movie in 1951 called Tomahawk, Universal mm -hmm. International Technical Movie. But... The picture shows Beckworth played 
by Jack Oakey. Now, mm -hmm. Jack Oakey's a fine actor. He played Mussolini in uh, Charlie Chaplin's uh, uh, thing with Adolf uh, Hitler, uh, but the great dictator. But Jack Oakey's a white actor. So mm -hmm. everybody learns Beckwith is important, mm -hmm. and nobody learns he is indeed a person of color. Mm. So in line with that, how have Native Americans responded to this work? Well, at first, uh, some of them were concerned uh, in a way that we, we really have to understand. Native Americans are, have been very dependent. The, governor, the government has thrown them off their lands. Uh, um, unemployment is very high on reservations and so on. And they were afraid, some of the groups, were afraid that my book might further encourage the government to deny them help. Mm. On the other hand, there were other groups right here in the New York area that welcomed me. Um, <clears throat> Chief Osceola, the Matinecock Nation, and others in invited me to attend powwows, participate in discussions, made me an honorary member. A, a group out in Ohio gave me the Amani Ama uh, Peace Award for bringing two people together who should have been brought together by the history a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, this is a very important work, and, you know, we certainly encourage our audience to really look at, you know, really grab this very important piece of our history. Tell us briefly what was Black Women in Old West, what do you discuss, talk about in that particular work? <laughs> Well, what I talk about is, once again, a completely missing population from uh, either our textbooks or our movies. There were black women that I show them their founding towns. Uh, <clears throat> one woman uh, named Mary Fields goes out to Cascade, Montana, where it can be 40 degrees below zero, and she drives a stagecoach, a stagecoach Mary. She's only the second American woman known to have delivered the mail mm -hmm. out in Cascade. And as I said, it, it was pretty freezing there. And she was, a, she was a tough old bird. So I, I wanted to tell, you know, stories mm -hmm. of people like that, these founders. Mm -hmm. Some of them became teachers, were in classrooms out in Oklahoma mm -hmm. where there were 32 all black towns. Mm -hmm. And the women played a leading role in them, not only as teachers, but as builders and uh, developing an education system. Mm. So in line with that, um, particularly I know that you have lectured about this topic and others around the world, around the country, and you have received numerous awards as well as appear on number, a number of uh, programs such as the legendary Like It Is, as well as Tony Brown's Journal. You've been on the Gary Bird Experience on radio as well as many, many others. Well, you know, on that note, Bill, I want to again thank you so much for your contributions to the collective American story in general, and also your contributions to our broadcast. And again, um, please let people know where they can find out more about your work. Yes, it's, it's, it's the website, WilliamLKatz.com. And I want to thank you for consistently, ever since we've known each other, you've interviewed me and many other people, with Dr. Sorrell and so on, to bring out this missing history. It's, uh, it's something that can strengthen people. It can strengthen us to know the truth, and it can certainly can strengthen, uh, strengthen young children who are not getting this in school. Absolutely. On that note, we want to thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.